The SynergyNet multi-touch project is being run from the School of Engineering and Computer Science at Durham University. The project team is researching the development and educational impact of multi-touch surfaces that can detect simultaneous contacts with two or more fingers and be used by up to five learners at once. Educational psychologists are considering the impact these surfaces may have on classroom interaction, whilst the computer scientists are developing software that fully exploits this exciting technology. The project came around from a new form of lab that we call the Techno Cafe, and that had an interactive whiteboard at the end. And I soon became aware that certain sets of students that happened to be nearest the interactive whiteboard dominated that, and that was typical of what was happening in classrooms. So the essence of SynergyNet is fair and equal access, so everyone around that table will be able to collaborate and perform the tasks that is set by the teacher. When you look at a multi-touch system, they're based on vision systems, and these vision systems give us um, information on what we call blobs. These are points of light that, um, uh, that are given off by the fingers touching the surface. Those points are translated into just simple cursors that have an identification and a position on screen. We want to maintain what we call orientation independence, and that means that you can present content in whichever direction that you need to in order for it to face the person who sat around the table. So we look at some of the computing challenges around the technology that we're dealing with, but we've also got education people and psychologists, and they've got a particular slant on what they see out of this project as well. The type of pedagogy that I think is going to be important for this technology is really an attitude about kids engaging in learning themselves. They're coming into a world where there is more knowledge being created than we will ever be able to teach them in school, so they need to learn how to organise knowledge for themselves, how to continue learning throughout their lifetimes. 48 minutes. So yes. why do you say that? Because it takes 15 minutes to Wait, walk to the park. Oh, right, so that's the kids love it. The, the ones we saw in this morning, they were really engaged. Um, but tying engagement to learning outcomes, that sort of Research work takes a lot of time. One of the activities that we've done is this mysteries activities where kids are given a number of clues to answer a question. They make the clues bigger if they think they're important. In a collaborative activity, you want everyone in the, in the group to understand what the problem is and what ideas they're using to solve the problem. That one's the main one. I would say them two are together. We're using what we're calling a social pedagogy. We're using the process of collaboration and through uh, individual students having to explain their work to other students, improve the depth of their understanding of the materials they're learning. Here we've got the teacher console and this is where we can set some of these challenges that we want the children to, uh, to have a go at. So I'm asking them to solve 8 plus 6 over 2 and I can set what I expect to be the right answer. I can take a view of this table over there by just hitting watch and now I can send the challenge to anybody on this table we know very well that as soon as a teacher involves themselves in group activity, just goes to observe for instance, the nature of that group activity starts to change. And being able to stand back and observe and know where things are going effectively and to know which of the groups actually need your support can better start to change the management approach. Teachers can direct their um, support to those, those that best need it. The SynergyNet team is currently developing framework applications that are not just one-offs, but rather skeletons that allow teachers and other users to produce their own content. We made a very conscious decision right from the start to have a licensing agreement that allowed uh, companies to take and develop from our, our works, but also for it to be used by schools without cost. Of course there are lots of other people looking at multi-touch surfaces as well. Um, there are rumours that people are developing multi-touch tablet PCs, there are already devices on the market that are offering multi-touch technology, but those devices are, are intended for single people to use. So the technology is becoming more prevalent in the marketplace already, and I can see that only ever increasing. I guess the model that we're looking at is interactive whiteboards that you'll find in schools at the moment. We do see the opportunity there for multi-touch to become as widespread and, and for it to not take too much technical challenge in order to, to operate them on a day-to-day -day basis. We've developed sufficient framework now that allows us to be, do quite robust testing and over a three-year time frame I would hope we could gain 
quite a, an incredibly rich set of data that we'd be able to not only demonstrate that it has an overall impact on the learning experience, but precisely where that impact is, and also by getting teachers involved to be able to understand how the adoption of that technology can be best achieved um, if it is going to not only be present in classrooms, but it's actually going to be used effectively. Placing the technology in the hands of students could start to change the nature of education in that classroom.